Hi everyone, it's me, Chandani, and you might be wondering why today I'm dressed so professionally. Well, it's because today we're doing a QBR. And if that term sends you into a panic, do not fear because I don't mean quarterly business review, I mean quarterly book review. So we're gonna talk about all the books that I read this past Q1 of 2023 and do a little deep dive into my reading statistics thanks to Storygraph. And we're gonna just talk about it and see what went wrong, what went right, how we can improve moving forward, you know, the general QBR things. And hopefully this gives you some interesting books to put to your TBR and remove from your TBR maybe if they're not as good. And yeah, it'll just be a good review and way to kick off the next quarter of reading. So I am a Storygraph girly through and through. And I love that Storygraph gives you a graphical like breakdown of your reading and you know how many books did you read what genres were they because you know the analytics nerd in me really thrives on that so i figured it would be a good opportunity or a way to see and reflect on what i've read to go through those graphs so far for this year and yeah just like see what's going on let's do a little review let's do a little analysis but obviously this isn't as professional as a qbr is supposed to be but that's not really the vibe on this channel so we're gonna go loosely based on this format. So my reading goal this year was 52 books, so basically one book a month, and I'm happy to report that I am reaching this goal as of now. Yes, that is correct. I've read 13 books in Q1. I am on track to reach this goal, which I'm very proud of myself for. And you know, you might think, okay, yeah, she's been reading a book a week, four books a month, you know, that's really great not really i read seven books in february somehow i don't exactly know how that happened but that's really been you know just like bumping up my average because i read two books in march as you can see in this graph yeah january we started off strong with four books but it's just been a little wonky since then but you know that happens like we all get in our reading slumps and our like good reading months and february was definitely a good reading month for me i don't know what exactly why i don't remember february I, this probably isn't a great format of video for me just because my memory is a little bit shit and so like I don't remember exactly you know why I was having such a good reading month in February or why I wasn't having such a good reading month in March but yeah that's just what ended up happening. Now let's look at moods since I find that to be pretty interesting. The number one mood is dark. Nobody's surprised by that. I love me a dark depressing sad read where the main character is tortured anxious depressed something along those lines you know i really feed off of that but the next few moods are lighthearted, funny emotional reflective so i feel like that's pretty balanced you know overall i feel like I'm having a good balance of moods going on so i'm pretty happy with that and so the next category is pace and so i tend to read i guess medium paced books but honestly i'm not sure if this is based on my rating of the pacing because every time I review a book I do say if it's medium fast or slow paced or if it's based on you know the actual average pace from like all the reviews or something I'm not sure if this is based on my pace this is definitely a biased statistic we've got going on here because every time I finish reading a book I think it's medium paced like I don't know what a fast paced book is I don't know I mean you know if a book is particularly fast paced or slow paced yeah I'll be giving it that rating but most of the time I feel like I think everything's medium paced and so this might be a little bit skewed you know you might we might have to look further into this number but for now let's just say about medium pace is what I typically go for now here's where we are departing a little bit from the norm so I've read mostly books that are 300 to 500 pages this quarter which is interesting because I feel like I tend to go for slower not slower shorter books a lot of the time I have you know big book fear that's a real thing I've talked about it before but I feel like I have been reading longer books and I've really been enjoying longer books lately I think I'm giving a little hint as to what's to come but two of the books that I rated five stars this quarter have been longer books so maybe I like longer books now We'll see it's something to investigate further for sure and in terms of fiction non-fiction all the books i've read so far are fiction 
I'm really hard pressed to find a nonfiction book that I can not get bored by. Um, would love some recommendations on that. Now the last thing is my genre breakdown. So the most popular genres are literary, contemporary, which makes sense. And then we also have romance. So yeah, that, that makes sense. And I think this looks pretty good. I think we learned some valuable information about, you know, long books versus short books, fiction, nonfiction, genres and moods. And so definitely going to take this information and see how I can, you know, switch up my reading a little bit in Q2, especially because some of the books that I really like this quarter are deviating from my normal, I guess, preferences, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And so it'll be interesting to maybe dive further into those genres and see what else I can find. If you want to get graphs like this for your reading journey, I definitely recommend Storygraph. It is woman owned and non Amazon owned. So, you know, double win. And yeah, I highly recommend it. the website as well as the application it can be a little bit clunky at times. But I just feel like, you know, the statistics, the analytics, those are so delicious. And they're worth any of the other maybe technical difficulties around it. Now that we have reviewed our statistics and analytics for this quarter, let's actually talk about some of these books that made up the 13 books that I read in Q1. So I already talked about my first couple reads of the year on this channel, which were Rock, Paper, Scissors and After Age Eve Brown, um, which I, I talked about in my first reading vlog back in January. So I won't really talk about those. My third book that I read this year was Severance by Ling Ma. I mentioned that a little bit in that video, but um, I really liked this book. I, you may not think that considering I gave it 3.5 stars, but I thought it was really well written. It was really timely because it is about a pandemic and I really found it to be memorable, but I think it just didn't really stand out to me in a lot in any particular way. I definitely want to read more of Ling Ma's work though. I liked her writing style. So I definitely liked this book. 3.5 is not a bad rating, you guys. It is a really good rating. It just like didn't have that like mm, factor for me to give it more than that. My next read was Funny You Should Ask by Elisa Sussman. And I really picked up this book because it's based on, I think, a real journalist's interaction with Chris Evans. And, you know, I love Chris Evans as most humans do i would think um but yeah that was really my only motivation for reading this and also it has a very cute cover um so those were my two draws to this book and i will say it wasn't bad you know it was it was decent it was fun but looking back i don't remember anything about it and i feel like that's often a good criteria for me in terms of rating books because i feel like if i can remember a book that means it like really stood out to me and something about it really hit home or like touched me and I feel like in this book nothing really stood out I couldn't really tell you like anything specific about this book and you know maybe that's my fault you know maybe that's just my poor memory talking but it was fun but I wouldn't you know read it again or pick it up again okay the next book is called Counterfeit by Kristen Chen and I really wanted to love this book I really did I found this book because I think I was just searching for something to read and I came across this one and the premise sounded really interesting to me. Basically it's about this woman who's, you know, was a pretty prestigious lawyer, but she leaves her job to take care of her child and her husband is not really present. He's pretty busy. He's a doctor. And so he's kind of out of the picture and they're kind of been, they've kind of been drifting apart for a while. And you know, she's a little bit down on her luck. She's lonely. And so she gets reunited with, one of her old friends from college and basically gets like sucked into this counterfeit designer bag scheme that she's in on and starts to get into this complicated world of basically organized crime, I guess. So obviously that premise sounded really cool, super interesting, but I think at the end of the day, like kind of fell a little bit flat for me and I didn't really love her writing style. And so that's why I, didn't rate it as highly, but definitely think it was an enjoyable read. I, you know, definitely finished it. I know like the premise a lot, it just wasn't amazing. It didn't live up to, I think, what the premise promised. Okay, the next book I read was The Viscount Who Loved Me and please don't judge me on this, okay? I literally rewatched Bridgerton season two and I was deep in the throes enough to 
literally read this book and pick it up and i will say not worth my time you know it's one of those rare instances where the show is way better than the book and so i would say if you're like me love british in season two just rewatch the show no need to pick up the book it really it, it has nothing when compared to the show so yeah definitely stream bridgerton season two we love that show her body and other parties by carmen maria machado was the next book and i was very excited to read this because i loved carmen maria machado's other book it's in my like top favorite books of 2022 video but yeah, this this one is short stories and it follows a lot of the sim same themes as I would say um, in the dream house does but I will say that a lot of this short stories maybe went a little bit over my head and I totally don't blame her for this. I totally blame myself for this. I just don't think I'm intellectual enough to understand exactly what she was getting at in some of the stories but it was definitely still interesting to read. Her writing is impeccable. It's amazing. It's heart-wrenching it's beautiful but yeah i think some of the stories just went a little bit over my head which is why i didn't rate it as highly but again i think that's a me problem the next book was the stranger by albert camus and so this is a little bit of a departure for me um if you don't know who albert camus is he is a pretty famous french author and philosopher and a lot of his i guess philosophy is focused on absurdism and this book is the same it's basically just a tale of i guess the fact that life is absurd and you know nothing really matters which that's a mood and i definitely appreciated that and it's a really quick read i read it i think in basically one day and so it was very enjoyable to read it just didn't really have that like wow factor for me i don't know it was i wasn't like blown away by it i kind of got his point he made his point pretty clear but yeah nothing else really stood out to me about it now we're getting to the exciting part because this is my first five star read of the quarter and i love this book so much this book is project hail mary by andy weir and if andy weir sounds familiar to you he wrote the martian which got made into a movie with matt damon but this is his second i think book and it has similar i guess subject matter of like space exploration but basically the premise of this one is that a bunch of scientists and astronauts are teaming together because there has been they've discovered this thing that could potentially you know be a threat to human life and the earth as a whole you know i won't say too much about it just because i went into this completely not knowing anything about the plot and i think that's the best way to go into it because it's so good and this book is pretty long i want to say it's over 400 pages maybe close to 500 and midway through the book i like didn't want it to end like i was already sad about the fact that i was going to finish this book and that i was going to leave this world because it's just so good definitely read this book it's uh, it's just amazing so i highly recommend this one and this is what i meant when i said that some of the books that are rated five stars are not typical books that i would read like i'm not really a science fiction person but I think I want to get more into it now that I've read Project Hail Mary and loved it so much. I think I may become a science fiction girly, like who knows? And so, yeah, definitely interested in reading more science fiction in Q2. If this one is any indication, it's so good. Check this book out. The next book I read was Local Woman Missing, and this I read as part of a book club with my two friends. and. Again, this is not a genre that I would tend to gravitate towards. It's like a mystery sort of thriller situation and I definitely enjoyed reading it. I think it was really fun to read. It was really quick to read. Um, definitely kept my attention throughout and I really wanted to know what was gonna happen. But I think looking back, reflecting on it now, I don't think it's particularly memorable in any way. Like I don't remember it now but i definitely still enjoyed it and i think it's a fun book to read as part of a book club if you have one or want to create one just because it's pretty easy it's pretty fast and it's just fun and it's fun to discuss it's a lot to do with like drama within the neighborhood between families within marriages and so yeah it's interesting to talk about for sure and when we were discussing this in a cafe there was a retired english teacher sitting next to us and 
he told us that we made him really happy by you know getting together and discussing this book and having our little book club so that really made all of our day and so i feel like i just have fond memories associated with this book because of that but yeah i think it wasn't too memorable or mind-blowing but really good example of what the genre could be we're down to the wire we're down to the last three books that i read this quarter the first one was kiss her once for me by allison cochran and so this one was another exciting one for me because allison cochran is the same author who wrote the charm offensive which was one of my favorite books that i read last year it's a romance and this book is also a romance it's a sapphic romance and it takes place during christmas so i feel like i really didn't miss the window for this book somehow like I read it in February so definitely not the right vibe but you know I love Christmas time it's always fun so I didn't mind being transported back into that but yeah I feel like this book was a really solid romance I just don't think it was as good as the charm offensive but it was very wholesome um the characters were really well fleshed out just like in her other book and so I definitely recommend it for any romance lover especially if you are looking for like a sapphic romance just because you know it might not be as common but i think it was done really well and i really liked it it was fun the next book that i read was eileen by otessa moshfeg and this was my second otessa moshfeg book my first one being my year of rest and relaxation and i know that that book is a little bit controversial or a little bit polarizing i should say a lot of my friends don't like that book at all but i liked it in terms of the fact that i really like otessa moshfeg's writing style but i agree that the plot is a little iffy but this one is her debut novel and it's quite good i would say that it's really different than my year of rest and relaxation but i really enjoyed it it was very mysterious and dark and you know that's exactly what i was wanting from this book and expecting from it and i feel like it definitely delivered on that it's also going to be a movie very soon with anne hathaway so that's definitely something to look forward to like if you like movie to book to movie adaptations then i think it'd be fun to read this before it comes out because that was kind of my motivation for reading this now as well finally we're getting to my last book of the quarter potentially my favorite book of the quarter which is tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and this book is very popular i'm sure you've heard of it i actually heard of it first i think from carly thorne who's another book youtuber and she made a video saying that you know if you're a swifty you would love this book simply based on the vibes but i totally agree with her because the storytelling in this book is just immaculate like i don't know how she manages to weave this story of these three friends over the course of 10 years so seamlessly and beautifully it was just honestly mind-boggling how she was able to create this world and move this story along in such a like beautiful way without it ever feeling forced and so I love this book. It follows three friends over the course of 10 years where they're creating a video game together that manages to be a quite a huge success. And, you know, going into the book, I was like, okay, I'm not really a gamer, but you know, maybe I'll check it out, but you don't have to be a gamer to like this book. It's just a beautiful story of friendship, which is what I really appreciated about it and loved about it. And yeah, I highly, highly recommend this book, five stars. I would give it six stars if I could. It made me sob, it made me laugh, it made me emotional, it made me happy. I never wanted it to end. I want like a sequel on these characters. It was just amazing. So there you have it. Those are the books that I read Q1. This is the wrap up of the quarterly book review. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was better than quarterly business reviews at your office if you do those. Let me know what were the favorite books that you read this quarter and i'll see you in the next one